Well, hello everybody. Here's another cute little craft. Um, I found this little box, right? It's got the lid to it, right? It opens up and it looks like that. I got this, I think, at Goodwill. Uh, I got it for a quarter. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it's from Punch Studio. But the reason I picked it up was because I thought it would be an easy way or an easy little craft for us to, um, you know, to work on. And so I spent a good part of the day, well, a good part of the morning anyway, figuring out, let me move this out of the way so it doesn't keep frizzing out on us. This is the paper I'm going to use. Um, how, you know, how to make this with measurements and things like that. And I went through a couple different, a couple different sheets of paper just to, you know, to make sure I was getting it right. And I finally was finally able to, you know, to, to make one just like it. Okay. Now these are my, my prototypes, so to speak, and I've got my little measurements and stuff on them. But, uh, but yeah, I thought it would be a really neat project to use. Now I used really thin cardstock and I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest using a heavier cardstock. Um, it just, it gives you more body. Now for me, this one, I'm going to, um, cover with paper. So this will give me, uh, a little bit more weight. Okay. But, uh, if you didn't want to do that, then you know, start out with a regular sheet and I would suggest double-sided cardstock. Um, so that way, you know, you don't have to worry about the extra whatever and you already have the color on the inside. Now what I don't have, and I'm waiting for it in the mail, is the magnet because it's got a mag magnetic closure. Can you hear that click? Right there, it's got the little magnetic closure. I don't have that yet. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the measurements and I'm going to put them in the box down below. Okay. So I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope everything is right. Yeah. I went through a bunch of different measurements and scribbled a bunch out and all kinds of stuff. So let's get this started. And I probably should have cut out the papers ahead of time, but I was trying to do everything else ahead of time. And, uh, I wasn't able to so let me get my cutters and the first piece of paper you need to cut out which will be what I call the outside wrap all right okay the outside wrap let me get a piece of paper actually I'm going to use I used white before but white's giving my uh, my autofocus a run for its money. So let's try some, uh, I've got a cream color. All right. Now the first piece I'm going to use is we need a piece that's uh, 10 and 5 eighths by four inches. So 10 and 5 eighths inches. All right. Which on an eight and a half by 11, that's all that's left over on that. So that's pretty good, you know. I have no idea why I just did that because I wanted to do paper, but that's okay. By four. So we'll set this one aside. So that's what we start out with, okay? In fact, let me go ahead and grab some paper because I wanted to do this in color this time. So let's pick out some really pretty. See, that would be pretty for the inside. All right, so we'll pull that one out. And let's find a coordinating one. I like those swirls. Hmm. See, now that's pretty. Polka dots and stripes. Well. Let's 
let's go with the swirls. All right, now these are not double sided. So I'm going to say if you wanted to do this with one sided paper, that I would cut out two of each of the pages. So that way you've got an inside and an outside. So now these are 12 by 12, so it'll give me a little bit less. So what did we need? We need 10 and 5 eighths, which is one tick past the 10 and a half mark. Because 4 eighths would be a half. All right, there we go. All right. And we'll set that aside. So that was 10 and a half, or 10 and 5 eighths rather, I'm sorry, by 4. Now this is not very thick paper. Alright, so there's 10 and a half by 4, so that'll be the outside. Let me set that there for a minute, and we'll do another one. Or not 10 and a half, I'm sorry, 10 and 5 eighths. Alright. Five eighths mark is dead center between the half mark and the three quarter mark. So, okay. So, this way we can go ahead and just attach them as is and able to you know, do that. So now we want the inside box, which I will use. <clears throat> now, <laughs> if I had a brain and I was really, really smart uh, as far as math and measurements and things like that go, I would be able to take out the eighths and the sixteenths because I hate working with those. But I'm not. So the second page is going to be, and the only reason it ended up being this way is because I had to add that extra sixteenth of an inch uh, to help with the, um, the shrinkage when you scored it. So, all right, second page is going to be seven and a half by five and thirteen sixteenths. Now, I know that is just awful, but Okay, let me see. Um, I'm lucky that my cutter has the 16th and the 1 8th, okay, inches, you know, marks, because if not, I would be lost. So if you've got the itty bitty marks, then it's 16 ticks between one inch or in one inch. So then you just count them. So you want 13. So 8 would be half because 8 sixteenths would be half. All right, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it's one tick past the three-quarter mark. All right, so let me make sure where I'm at. Yeah, it's seven and a half. Is that where we're at? Nope, that one was seven and a half. See, I stopped paying attention and I lost my track. Okay, so we need seven and a half by five thirteenths and sixteenths. Thirteen sixteenths, which is one tick past three-quarters. So let's do that. All right, and then let's make the other one. Uh, seven and a half this away. Okay, so we're going to set the cutter aside, <clears throat> and we're going to need the score. Okay, um, I'm trying to figure out if it would be easier to attach them or score them first. I think scoring might end up making them a little bit womper jawed. So let's go ahead and attach them. And for speed purposes, I'm just going to use tape. I'm 
glue might work a little better, but you know, it's it's whatever your preference is. Or just using a single or double-sided sheet, which would probably save a lot more time. have any any overage just fold it back in on itself alrighty and I mixed it up a little bit see that Using glue would probably work a little bit better only because you have a little bit of wiggle room if you don't get it right. And me, I'm really bad about getting it right. Oops, no, I did not want to do that. Okay, I'm off just a little bit. but not on this side, so that means my cutter must have been uneven. Okay. Let's just trim this. Now the measurements are correct. Whether, you're, you're, whether your cutter will cut it right, you never know. So, all right. So this is the outside wrap. Now, what I did was I took, um, I went ahead and did the measurements. Yeah, I'm off. Maybe you can do this much better than me, but it's a good thought. All right, on the inside. I'm going to turn this sideways. Now, what I did was starting at one side because the last side is going to be the top flap. All right. It's going to be a little bit smaller than the first one, and there's a reason for that. So at the first score on the long end, okay, it's going to be at two and a half. So we go over to two and a half, we mark it, and we score it. Okay, and then next one is going to be at four and a quarter, so you just keep going, four and a quarter, and we score that. Okay, the next one is at six and three quarters. So we score that. And then the next one is at eight and a half. There. Okay. So depending if you want the pink on the outside or the circles on the inside or whatever pattern you want is the way you'll fold it. And you'll fold them all the same way. You won't fold them back and forth like accordion. Okay. All right, and there we go. So now we've got our our box right there. This will be the top flap, or the second top, and then this will be on top. Okay. So that's your outside wrap, is what I call it. All right, now we'll set that aside and we'll work on the box. Now, if you wanted, you could get a different coordinating piece for the outside. But for poops and giggles, we're going to do it this way. Let's see if I can do this any better. Well, honestly, let's see if it'll work better with glue. Okay. Uh, 
There it is. And that glue stick doesn't give you very much room to maneuver, so Ugh, I hate using Eileen's on paper. Let's try Tombow. There we go. Gives us a little bit of room. And it's not so hard to work with. Using a double-sided piece would probably work a whole lot better. But I really liked this pattern, so... Now I'm making sure that my edges are going to be glued nice and good. And then I'll just kind of smooth out the center so we don't get those glue lines. Alrighty. Side. And let's hope we can do this a little bit easier. Yep. I got it a little bit crooked, but like I said, we're finding that double-sided paper would probably work a little bit better, and you don't have to worry about this. So let's just trim it. Because even though it's off a little bit, it's still going to be the same shape as the one that's there. Okay. Now the scoring on this one. Where's my scoreboard? All right. You're going to score it at one and three quarters on all four sides. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got one and three quarters right here. Okay. And then we're going to turn it a quarter turn and go one and three quarters. Whoops, that one kind of just went right off. It didn't even stay in the... Come on, why is it jumping? It might have hit a glue bump. Okay, then one quarter turn. Again, one and three quarters. And one quarter turn. Oh, we went the other way. Okay, one quarter. Anyway, do it all the way around. And you've got one and three quarters. Okay, now on the, the shorter side right here, on the fold, you want to take your scissors. Oops. On the shorter end, cut the fold up to across, right there, up to that first little stop. Okay. Turn it around and only do this on the short end, which is the 5 and 13 16 side. Use better scissors than me. I'm going to fold my scores in towards the pink. short ends, you want to take the two outside flaps, bring them in, and then pull the outer flap up 
to meet. So you end up with, you see how that works? See how crisp that is? And you can glue that or tape it. Me, let me see. I'm going to use tape because it's just my go-to. <sighs> okay. Now notice it will not go all the way across. It stops right there. So just keep that in mind when you go to put some tape on it or glue or whatever you're using. Overage, just fold it back. Okay. And there we go. And we'll do the same with this one. No, they're in the cab corner cabinet. I'm recording. that back over and then there we go again. There you'll have something that looks like that now. Okay. Now if you wanted you could put a different piece of paper here, cover it up, whatever, if you wanted. Like I said me I'm just doing this for um speed. Which doesn't seem to be going very fast, but if it, anything was like earlier when I was trying to figure out all those measurements, whoo, that was interesting. Okay. Now you could put a piece across the bottom if you wanted. I'm not going to. I just want to make sure the sides and the top are really well put in there. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. Good grief. This one side didn't want to come up. I cut all my nails off when I was moving and they haven't completely grown back in yet. And there we go for that side. And we will do the same on here. Probably would have been easier to do it this way in the first place instead of trying to do it on the box itself. But, you know, hey, learn something new every day. Alrighty. And then do the same right here. right up there. So then now we've got the box. Okay, so we'll set that back. And this one, all you have to do is set it in there. We'll attach it, no worries. Okay, wrong side. There we go. Okay. Again, you can use glue. I'm not because I like the tape, I like the ease, I like the cleanup. Oops, well that'll be covered. My tape caught it. Oh, good grief. I'm at the end of the roll, so this one's getting a little armory. Now, when I'm putting the tape down, I'm not putting it directly onto the fold or right up to it because that'll mess up the, the spacing. Okay, and one more piece right here. Okay, and then I'm going to throw a piece here and a piece here. Okay. Now let's pull these off. And you know, any pattern you want to use is um, is great. Uh, I really like this pattern, you know. But uh, I didn't have any paper like that. But the possibilities are endless. They really are. Now, if you didn't have magnets, you could use um, Velcro, you know, anything you wanted. And make sure when you set your box down, you are also not right up against the fold. Okay. And there we go. You've got yourself a little box. Let me clean this up really quick. Put that over here, put this down, 
and now we can embellish. Okay, so let me get, I saw a piece of paper in here that I thought would be fabulous for um, a top embellishment. So, get a smaller pair of scissors and I'm going to pick one of these which I think I'm going to use this one right here I'm going to cut this out set this aside and then I'm going to fussy cut this Actually, no, I'm not going to just yet. I'm going to get a piece of cardstock. You find a scrap piece from earlier. There we go. Nope, that's not one. That's not what I wanted anyway. Yeah, that'll work, I hope. Yeah. All right, so let me trim this down as easy as I can. Now, if you wanted, you could probably, which I might do because that's still kind of thin. I have a piece of cardboard. I'll glue it to some cardboard. There you go. There we go. Probably should have done this earlier, but that's okay. This way, you kind of get a little idea of how things can go. Now, if you don't like fussy cutting, you can always use a different image, a different type of image. You can use a graphic that's already been, you know, cut out. Um, yeah, I don't like these scissors that much. They don't want to work that well. It's not the graphic. It's not the idea. It's the, it's the tools. And the fact that the glue is not quite dry. Let me pause this while I cut this out so you guys aren't sitting here the whole time. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got one little corner left, one little spot. And the one thing I, I forgot to do before I did this, which is okay, I mean, there's no particular order that you have to do anything in. So there's my, well, I can't really see that glare, but there's my little flower. Is, all right, on the short end, here's the one that goes all the way over. Here's the one that just has the short end. Okay, what I did was I took a lid. Actually, let me use this one. So I keep my... It's a little lemon curd jar I had. Uh, this was the short end. Yeah, this was the short end. And I took and rounded the edges off. Okay? Obviously, I don't have a corner punch that big. Okay? But as long as you line your um, 
pattern up on both edges, you'll have an even you'll have an even curve on both sides. See, uh, see that line? Okay, and we'll do the same on this side. As long as we line up the edges on both sides, we'll have an even line. Now, whether I can cut that line <laughs> correctly is uh, a whole nother matter, but we'll give it a shot. I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but this is the way I have that my puny amount of knowledge has. And I work with what I can, right? So then I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to erase that little bit of pencil line up there. And alrighty. I got a couple of, oops, call them ookies. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to get some foam. These are little ones, so I don't have any big ones. I did, but I don't know where they're at. I really don't. Let me see. These are a little bit bigger. I can use these. I have circle ones which are even bigger so let's do that all right I'll put those off to the side oh yeah perfect okay now When you glue it on this side, you want it to hang over some, but you don't want it to attach to the second layer. So I'm going to open this all the way up, turn it upside down, and I'm going to add a little bit of glue, even though these have um, sticky to them. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll hear me say all the time, never trust the sticky on a sticker. And I don't. So Now, okay, for those of you who may be on a budget, all right, when I pulled this out, right, you see how there's all this extra space around it? I won't get rid of that. I'll be able to use that. So just, just a little... There we go. Now, before I attach it to this, I'm going to let this set for a minute. I'm going to put these up. Now, these adhesive dots I got from Paper Studio, I got these at Hobby Lobby. Um, these say $2.99, but I never buy anything at Hobby Lobby full price. Uh, the only reason I shop at Hobby Lobby is uh, we don't have a Michaels, we don't have a Joann's, we don't have anything down here where I'm at. The only thing we have is Walmart and Hobby Lobby. So, but yeah, so I got this for $1.50 and it's two sheets. It's an eighth inch thick, um, 104 pieces. So that's not bad for $1.50. I'm gonna set that in my drawer and put those away. So we're going to let that set. Now in the meantime, while that's setting, you can always, you know, do something along the lines of, now this is crisp. This is like spring. So I really don't want to vintage it out because then that kind of makes it, you know, it ages it. So I'm going to use um, a pigment, but I'm going to ink the edges. And it, this is Platinum Brilliance from Sukaniko. It's one of those uh, dew drops. Um, and it's not super noticeable, okay? It really isn't. 
and being a pigment ink, it's going to dry long. It's going to take longer to dry than a dye ink or um, a chalk ink would. So, in fact, I've got some extra edge. Now I'm just going to leave it like that because I kind of like that. All right. But that's all I'm doing, and it's it's called platinum. It's very 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 faint but when you catch it in the light you'll see the sparkle and I'm going to do this side as well You could decorate this any way you'd like. You can fill this. You can do this with Christmas paper at Christmas time or, you know, and put little goodies in it or your Valentine's Day, you know, with those little hearts and, and just your imagination is limitless. All right. So that should do. Let's turn this back over. I'm going to. Pick these off. I'm going to set this right at the edge so it it flips off. I I forgot. Okay. Also, never trust the sticky on a sticky is both sides. So come on. There we go. And there we go. Almost forgot both sides, not just one. There we go. And then, like this one, if you wanted to put a little magnet in there. I don't have the magnet right now. Well, I have our Velcro. But there's your box. You see that? cute little craft box and it's something that would be semi easy to make hopefully with your um, with your grandkids or your children or um, school children Sunday school anything you want um, although Sunday school might not give you enough time but it's like I said it's just a cute little craft um, yeah that one didn't go off the edge, but this one I did. You probably don't need to go all the way that much farther off the edge than I did. But, you know, hey, I wasn't paying attention. And that's that. But if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Share, share, share. And uh, always, always, always remember to find the humor in life. If you don't, life sucks. Okay. Thanks. I want everybody to have a great day. And... Let's do that. Okay. And God bless.